Welcome back to Cisco Knowledge Base. This is Zach from Content Security Team. Today we will discuss a functionality that has been added with the Async OS version 8.5 and above. It's known as a bandwidth and time coda on web security appliance. As for the user guide and release notes, these are the link. The www.cisco.com page where all the user guides have been posted. Once this release is available for all of our customers and complete the beta and limited availability, it will be posted here. So what exactly the time codas and bandwidth it provides? The time and volume quotas allow administrator to configure policy and restrict access. We can do um, based on time. We can also do based on how much quotas per user or per policy can be applied. If we have a multiple quotas, then the most restrictive, restrictive would be applied. This applies for HTTP, HTTPS, and FTP traffic. Some of the use cases. The coda can be applicable for HTTP, HTTPS, and FTP traffic. Can be configured for under access policy or decryption policy. And also, we can add the time range. For example, in a business hour between 9 to 5, we can restrict access to minimal or even block. Codas are reset daily, and reset times can be configurable. So as we said before, when one or more quotas are applicable, the most restrictive will be applied. These are per user base. When the user identity is not available, then is applied per IP address, which is the client IP address. So use cases. So as an administrator, I can have a policy set to limit for one hour, for 50 meg, 20 meg, 10 meg, or 2 meg, or any amount that we like in meg, kilobits, kilobytes, or gigs for a surfing per day, especially on the business hours. Or I can tie with the social networking for limited amount of time can be applied or allowed for per user based policies uh, or for entertainment for that matter. Then limit the access for social networking, and it's also enhance the productivity at the same time, especially business hours 9 to 5. So when the user reaches the coda, what happens? We can trigger an end user notification to give them a heads up that you're about to come up to limit the coda, and subsequently it can block the page. We can also put a percent or we can disable this functionality by default as well. So it's the config part. Config is fairly simple. We'll look at the, the GUI part. First, you're going to create a quota profile under Web Security Manager. I can do a time and range. I can add the time, then the volume. In addition, once we have the access policy that tie with the decryption uh, with the coda and time range, I can apply it for access policy or decryption policy for that matter. Same steps, and we'll go through one. The last one is for end user warning page. This is to display a warning page on the client network when the clients are about to approach their daily codas of the time or the volume expiring. Or reaching almost to their limit, and we'll do that uh, as well. For the logs to look at it, which all these transactions are being logged for review, are in the access log and a proxy log. For troubleshooting, we can look at the coda um, where it can be enabled from the command line. We can also look at the coda query command, which will gives us the uh, ability to search per user or we can reset all on demand as needed. Then we'll talk about some of the caveats. 
Some of the websites such as Facebook, Gmail, they have a frequent auto updates. This will count against the SCOTA on the access policy or decryption policy. So if I have a CODA set for 5 meg and that day the Facebook or Gmail, those accounts are very chatty or they updated something new and it's triggering a lot of objects and pages and updates, that will count all against my CODA. So displaying the warning page, it could be interrupted. And during possibility, when you are surfing the web as well, it may not show. Third one is, is fairly important. If the proxy restarts, what happens? It calls the code information to reset and allow user to access more than we planned. So for FTP data, the download and upload. So if a user is uploading or downloading a data file to an FTP server, that counts against the CODA, but the control traffic is not, which is the connections. Access logs. So these are the simple access log which show what happens, block webcat, these are demo policy. For the CODA approaching, these will be the warnings or block admin overall CODA, actually. And I have a demo policy and demo ID, block overall. This is a sample for the proxy logs. That volume CODA exceeded, and it will tell you the client IP as well. And then now it's blocked. So if a user is complaining about why am I not able to get out and surf the internet anymore, then we can come back here and look at the proxy logs or access log. It will tell the story what happened. And here's the review. So quickly, let's go configure this. So for configuring stuff, we'll follow this here from the GUI. So under Web Security Manager, Time Range, and CODIS. <clears throat> Web Security Manager, Time Range, and CODIS. I have configured a demo time range I can show you. In my demo time range, I have just a, this is just a free uh, description text name and use the uh, time zone setting from the appliance. And I'm a bit more aggressive here. If you look at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, I'm blocking all day. So administrator can choose which day of the week that be according to their business needs uh, could be better. So um, that can be modified here. Same page uh, for the CODAS and my demo CODAS that I have. Again, it's the name. I can set manually what time to be reset. I left the default 12 a.m. Again, use the time zone for appliance. I can also select a predefined time range profile or time-based access list. Here the code is, and if you look at it for the lab demo purpose, I set to 1KB, which is pretty insane. <laughs> 1KB, I can go in the Mac, I can go in the Gigabit. So that's for the demo purpose, 1KB. So that's for the part to configuring time range and CODA. Let's go back to our instructions. Then the part comes in to tie. Before we do that, let's configure and make sure the end user warning page. That's under security services, end user notification, edit setting, and it's under the time and volume CODA expiry warning. Let's go there. Security services, end user notification, edit setting. If you scroll down on the bottom of the page, that's where the new setting is will take in place. Time and volume code expiry warning. I can put any percent, I can put in when 50% to start giving a warning. Amount of time left, I can do that. So these are very um, these variables can be configured here. So it's under time and volume code expiry warning.
as to tie all these config what we just did, we'll go under Web Security Manager. We can do under Access Policy, under URL Filtering, and then we can check for Coda Base and Time Base columns. We can repeat these steps if needed for decryption policies as well. So let's do that. So just to recap, we created um, these time range called demo time range and demo codes. We're going to tie these to access policy. Security manager, access policies. We'll go under URL filtering. So for testing, what I would like to do the entertainment category, we'll change that. So let's, if you look at the column, this column is the coda base. This is the time base. So if I check that, I'll select my time range. I pick my policy, date, and time range. What action do I want to do? I can block, monitor, or warning. Or I can also use the global setting as well. So let's block it at this point. Otherwise, if the time it's not this part in this policy, what do you want to do? Otherwise, so that we want to just either monitor or warning. So it's monitor. For coda base, my coda base is the demo coda. That's the one I configured it. So we are done. I say submit. So there was no change made. I had applied this before, so that's why we don't see anything to commit. Otherwise, you will see to commit this change. To test it, fairly quick, let's make sure we are wrapping the log. That's my command line, access log. What we'll do is we'll point explicit connection. So since we set 1KB for our coda, and if you remember the, the category was entertainment. So we'll pick one site for entertainment. We'll test with www.abc.com. So as soon as I did that, since it was 1K only, I got this end the user notification, do not have a sufficient coda volume complete this transaction and it's closest there. This is for the URL category because my coda has been expired. Warning will be different if I have coming close to it for my coda to be complete. Let's look at the log. So if I look at my access log, that's denied. This is my website, abc.com. Decision tag, if you look at a block admin overall coda, so the limit underscore 12. So this tells me this decision tag message that this is blocked by admin. Overall coda is limit approaches. And this is my policy. That's the demo policy that I've created and demo identity on the machine. This is just the identity and access policy, nothing new there. I can do exact same thing under HTTPS. So let's take this out. So just like we did under access policy, we can do exact same thing under decryption policy. And if you remember, it was under URL filtering. And these are the column, coda base and time base. And in our case, entertainment, I'll do this, entertainment. We can do a time range. We can do set to pass through, monitor, decrypt. Because if I pass through it, it will allow it. If I decrypt, then it jump over to access policy and take an effect there. Or I can just drop it simply. So that's for the time base. 
for the core database, which is next column over here. If you look at it, if I pick a demo coda, that's my policy. The message on the bottom says, by selecting a coda for HTTPS traffic, it will be treated as a pass-through and will not be decrypted. So apply the coda, we need to go under access policy, which we did. So the access log will display it same fashion as we looked at it the earlier, which is client IP address, and these are all pretty standard what we have today, abc.com, and tag, policy, and identity. Go back to our notes. So that's what we saw in the logs that similar to what we see here for abc.com block admin overall codes and then block admin overall codes again here. But on the proxy log, this is what we do the smoking gun. Very critical. So with that, that brings us to review. Um, so this functionality, configuring bandwidth and time quota on web security appliance, it's available version 8.5 and above. All the documentation posted under these links will be once it's available as a GA release and release notes as well. Some of the caveats, um, why do we want to use it, what's the functionality, possible use case, and stepping through the command line or the GUI, how you configure it and apply it, including end user warning page as well. Some of the caveats, FTP data, download, upload, and it's a proxy restart so it causes the coder to reset, and a couple of others. With that, that brings us to, uh, to the end of this presentation. Thank you so much for joining and watching this video. Thanks for your time again. Have a good day. Have a good afternoon. Have a good evening. Thank you.